Okay, uh, my talk today is going to be in um, uh, interconnection, how we all are one. Uh, I, I was recently watching a, um, a video and reading something from the master Thigna Khan, which is a great master, and uh, about his order, the interbeing order principles that they have, which are pretty, to me, they are very uh, humane, humanistic. They just, they just, you know, it doesn't seem like a dogma, like a religion, it's just like something natural to tell people to do, which is very simple, you know. I guess many times uh, uh, religion is taken on a, on a, on a, on a the context in which it's taken is, is just uh, uh, not the appropriate way and, and, and it comes to mind uh, many of my friends who are totally uh, agnostic and don't believe in absolutely nothing but again it's just the context that because they don't believe in anything they say there's no God, there's nothing, there's no spirit so I guess the context comes in what is it that God or spirituality is to you. So reading his uh, uh, precepts, you know, it gave me a lot to think about how we are connected. We, first of all, we have this notion of me, myself, that I am, and how it arises the moment we open our eyes in the morning, boom, it's there. It's like we are. The moment we are consciously comes into being and boom, we are. And uh, how it is that, that through our education and, and the way we are raised and, and our society, friends and everything has to do with the way you see uh, the world, reality. And uh, it's easy for us to be just taken by our ego and, and say, yeah, that there's only me. Yes, of course, you know. Uh, there's only us in the universe, you know, because why? Because it's only through us that we that we see the universe. There's no uh, other out there. The moment I die, this universe is gone. So we, I always think that, that there's six point billion uh, uh, universes here on Earth, you know? <laughs> because it's, it's only my universe that I see. The moment I'm gone, it's gone. So. But how do how how can in, in in that context, it's easy for us to just say, well, it's only me, so I'm only going to take care of myself. That's true in a way, because if we can't take care of ourselves, if we don't nurture ourselves, how can we take care of other people? It's it's just a basic notion that many times uh, uh, we try to give, but when you give, what you don't have. So it's, it's, it's by having this notion of ourselves, the me, the I am, but nurturing ourselves and, and giving ourselves that space, that, that which we give, we have to give ourselves. So I, I think that many times when, when, the, when I look at <laughs> the situation in the world, at the state of things, I'm just like, wow, you know, what is it that we're not seeing? You know, uh, we look at, uh, uh, for instance, uh, the economic situation, which is something that it's at this po point in, in, in time is, you know, something that it's, it's hurting a lot of people. And why is it that, that, you know, we can talk about inequality and how a lot of the money is put into very few hands. Well, which is, you know, it's good because you know everybody has, I guess, a right to to you know do as you please and make money. But then again, what do we, what do we give? And this doesn't have to be money. This is just an example, you know. Uh, but what do we give? Uh, that if we wouldn't give ourselves. How can we give to anybody? For instance, compassion. Compassion is something that I think it's at the heart of this practice. Compassion. And we can be compassionate towards others, but if we're not compassionate toward ourselves, what's going to happen? It's it's like you know when you sweep, and what are you going to do with all the dust that you got? What 
you're going to pick it up and throw it away or just throw it on the, the rod. What's going to happen, if you put it, keep putting it onto the rod, it's going to keep building. And eventually, it's going to start spreading out. So it's the same thing with what we give. What we give to others, we have to give ourselves. And that's very, very basic because eventually it's going to come a point when we don't have any more to give. And then that's when the suffering starts. Because you want to give more because you feel that that's your nature. But what are you going to give what you don't have? And then suffering starts. Because, oh, I, I need to give. I need to give. And then we keep stretching ourselves thin. And it comes to a point where we either uh, step back and, I guess, reaffirm ourselves and find our core values or, or strengths, or we just break. And that's when, when you know, a lot of uh, suffering starts happening because we want to give. It could be anything. It could be, you know, I mean, love to our family members, friends, and society in general. Or it could be money. It could be anything that, that we give. You know, we have to really start with us first. Just anything that we do and give starts with us. And in that context, okay, how can we feel related to others? How can we really connect with others? You must say, if there's only me, how can I really connect with other people? Well, first of all, empathy. We've got to really step in their shoes and, and know that that everybody, everybody is suffering. I mean, even even if it's if you're sick, you're sick because you're sick. You, know, you suffer, you, you want to be healthy. If you don't have economic means, you suffer because you don't have the means. And if you have a lot of money, you might suffer because you don't need money, but you might suffer because you're afraid of losing it. And there's always suffering. So to feel this connection, to me, is just looking at, at other people and, and realizing that they're just like us. It, it doesn't mean that because someone, uh, 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 like the Dalai Lama, let's say, you know, he's just a person. And I guess when we, in Thich Nhat Hanh, another of the great masters, we miss the, the, the point that they're just like us. And, and I guess the greatest teaching would be to learn from them is that they're trying to tell us that we can be like them. That we, they, they, that they're not special, they're just you know, people that have taken the time to invest in themselves and, and, and give. So to feel connected to me is just feeling that, being, uh, having empathy for other people. And, and in that sense, there's no wrongdoing. It could be that they do something, but it doesn't affect you because the moment something affects you is because you want to change either things or that person. And you, you don't give them any freedom to be. You know, it could be a, a, one of the main uh, situations here in the United States is the uh, politics. You know, we got the right, the left, the, the middle, the center, the <laughs> north, the south, I don't know. <laughs> But uh, uh, if, if we look into that context, and even with religion, you know, we got the uh, the people that are ultra religious, and then we got the people that don't believe in anything. But there's nothing wrong in, in that. It's just the truth. And and if you look in that context, you know, to me, I always say that people that do things that harm others because they're they are they they are not conscious. They don't realize what they're doing. It's not that. They might have an intent to harm, and just like we chanted, you know, let me be forgiven when someone hurts us in, in, by, by word of, or intent. So when someone does something, to me, it's just like they don't know what they're doing. It could be, you know, there are people that, that do a lot of things to, to harm other people. But, and it's not that they, in, in a way, they do something that break the law. They have to because we live in a society where you know law has to be applied so they they have to be punished of course they drop the law all of us we break the law and we need to be you know uh, uh, take responsibility for it we have to but judging is a whole different thing judging if we try to say oh 
this person did, did this, and then you go on to a rant about what they did wrong. It's just, just a, 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 I guess, self-righteousness and try to uh, compensate something in us that we want to feel right about what this person did wrong. So judging is, 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 is hard. It's hard because we've got our values. We've got our values. And what is preset views of everything? Everything has a right or a wrong. But when we go beyond and, and see the situation, to me, every situation that arises is not to find a right or wrong, but to transcend the situation. In that context, every problem that comes up in life is a situation that needs to be transcended. Why does it come to us? How come I have these problems and my neighbor doesn't have any of those problems? They might not have my problems, they got their own problems. So the situations that arise to me, they have to be transcended. It, it just, and, that's, and, and to me, that's the reason why we need to really go above and beyond ourselves and look into the situation and see what it is that we need to transcend. And, when we look at others and we see what they do, and we might say, oh, this person did this and this is wrong, yes. According to, to society, yes, or to laws, yeah, exactly. It's, you know, it's something wrong. But we cannot judge. We just got to let things exist because the moment we judge, the moment our mind judges, we separate from ourselves. We are just, you know, uh, not being present to, to, to ourselves, which is what, you know, what is needed to be uh, aware of, of others and to have that interconnectedness that I'm talking about. So, being aware of the moment, being aware that these people, whatever they're doing, they, they might not be aware. And, and that's why we go into discussions and, and, and disagreements, because you try to tell someone you're doing wrong. But in their mind, they're not. They're just doing what they know best and what they understand. So we have to understand that they got their point of, point of view. We have our point of view, and none of us is wrong. It's just a point of view. So we have to transcend the fact that these people do something wrong and, and, and in, in our point of view or according to society. So when we, when we go beyond that, the judging, we find freedom because we let things exist as they are. We let those people exist as they are. And, and that's, that's where we uh, find that peace. That's where we find ourselves, within that space, that moment where we're just being not judging, not uh, uh, separating from ourselves. So how, how, do, how do we uh, uh, do that? Well, meditation is, is one of the, the means, you know, the practice, this practice is how we get to uh, 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 get to that point where we don't judge and we just see, but it, it all starts with us. It just it starts with us. So. How can we, and, and sometimes it's hard to connect with ourselves, which is like, oh, well, I'm having a hard time. Of course, if you are sick and you are having troubles, or whatever situation that you might, go, might be going through, it's not going to let you see clearly. But if we want to look at, at it from a, from a, a, a very, very uh, real point of view, you would just look at things. And we are made of, we're flesh, bones, that's all we are. How do we, how can we connect with other people? Well, we can connect with uh, knowing that this piece of wood was cut somewhere. And the people who cut it, they cut it, they, then the driver brought it, and they, they brought it to the store, it passed through many hands. So that person that cuts the wood up in Oregon, so I don't know where it comes from, it might come from somewhere else. <laughs> but we're connected to that people. Our clothes, the people that pick the, uh, the cotton or, or the, the fabric that we need, and then the people who saw it, and then he, if it's made in another country. So that's how we see that we're all connected because we need 
we need we we say well you know I I I I, uh, I don't need such and such person. That's a whole different story. But we need all of us. It's it's just this whole uh, uh, human uh, being thing is is to me it's just one one whole being comprised of six point billion. But we're just one. And like I said, that's how that's what we can connect to to these to other people just by looking at, at things, knowing that every single thing that we need, that we wear, that we eat, it comes from someone. So we think that we don't need the world and that we cannot connect. We're connected already. It's not like we're not. And I've always that uh, talk to Roche about this and, and this guy that says the same. The reason why we don't feel connected, it could be to the absolute, to, to the universe, as a spiritual, uh, uh, in a spiritual way, is because we think we're not. But we're constantly connected. The only reason why we don't feel that connection is because we think that we're not. So it's just the thought stopping us from being connected. Of course, there's you got to practice. You got to do the meditation and, and just put yourself in that space. But the reason why we don't feel connected is because we think we're not. It's the same with not feeling connected to the rest of the world. It's because we believe that, oh, I got nothing to feel connected, you know, with them. Like, you know, it might be, a, like I said, a neighbor that, oh, I got nothing to, you know, talk to him about. You might not have anything to talk about. But that doesn't mean that that, that person is not connected to you. Why? Because I'm sure if a fire happens in your house, the first person that's gonna come to your help is your neighbor. You know. So that's 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 how how we you know feel this connection. And it come it might be you know with uh, people that we feel that don't really bring the best in us. But again, it's the same thing. The situation that arises is to be transcended. Why is it that that this person? really brings the not best in us because we probably it might be two reasons this is the way i see it it might be two reasons one is that you don't want to see something in yourself that that person brings out whatever the feeling emotion that the person brings out in you is because you feel it in it yourself but you don't want to see it you just want to hide it in, and you be pretending that it's not there. So that's one one point of view. The other point of view is that you might not be like that person. Let's say someone um, uh, who is, is is cruel to children. You might not yourself be cruel to children, but you have a, a judgment about being cruel to children. That's why people that bring those things in us and uh, are in a way teaching us something that's you know like I was talking last week two weeks ago what suffering suffering is the best is your best teacher it's it's I cannot uh, emphasize it enough suffering is your best teacher because the reason why you suffer is because there's something that you either need to learn or need to be aware of Something is, is, is arising that is that you're not seeing and it's causing you to suffer and, and say, hey, here I am. Look at me. So suffering is to me is something that, that it's a great teaching. And and we don't have to agree with what they do, but at least we need to just be in peace with ourselves. To me is a is a is a, a great uh, uh my job, what I do is I, I do social media. <laughs> so to me, getting up and, and opening the computer and seeing all this news about all the bad things that are happening. <laughs> it's a great exercise. <laughs> it's a great exercise. It's just like waking up and saying, oh, these, uh, uh, these cops beat up a, a pregnant woman. A cop shot a, a, a 12 year old kid. And those are things that, that you might not Sometimes you just can't be, you know, can't look at and, and, and ignore it. 
at least within yourself, because they arise, I think, any human being that, 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 uh, uh, that cares would be, if not outraged, would be worried about it. So looking at the news is a great exercise for, exercise for me. <laughs> you just letting go, letting go. So that's that's how you can uh, actually learn from anything that arises. Like say even even just going on the road and someone might cut you off. You got two options: talk back and know who knows what might happen, or just take it as a lesson. What did I do wrong? Maybe we didn't see it, and somehow the person t thought that we were cutting them off. So they cut us off back. And that's what happened to me. That I've been distracted, and, and people have cut me off. But I didn't realize, oh, that's, that's what I did. So it's a reaction. And many times that, that happens to us, we don't look at what we do that brings people's reaction. And then we get bothered by it. So just looking at, at people, at situation, at things, you know, you, you might say, like, you know, why is this pillar there? It's like, oh, I can't see the altar, and, and you might be bothered by it. And to me, it's like, why is it there? It is there because it is there. <laughs> Simple. So that's how we can look at how many things in the world and then just give some peace to ourselves. And that's how it starts, with peace, compassion to ourselves. And then we can go ahead and spread it out, give it to others. And it's simple. Next time you have a, a problem not feeling uh, connected, you can just Go to a loved one, family member, friend, a neighbor. I'm sure there's someone who needs a little bit of help. You can just go and help or say, how can I help you? How are you doing today? Maybe that person needs to talk. Maybe they need to be heard. Maybe your neighbor needs been sick and they haven't taken out the trash. So when that's 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 the way I used to solve a lot of my problems. <laughs> when I was feeling uh, uh, bad about myself, I would just call someone and say, "Hey, how can I help?" Gracias.